The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Monday, January 17th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery division. My partner's Frank Smith, the boss of Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. My name's Friday. We got a report that a woman had been badly beaten in her home out on Oakwood Avenue. She was unable to describe her assailant. He was still at large. We had to find him. Forty-seven p.m. We got to seventy-nine eighty-two Oakwood Avenue. Who is it? Police officers. We'd like to see Miss Griffin. How do I know? I beg your pardon. How do I know you're police officers? Pass it through. I want to see it good. I'm sorry, I can't do that, ma'am. You'll have to look at it here. Can you see it? Well, all right. Come on in. After what happened here, you can't be too careful, you know. Got to take all precautions. Yes, ma'am, we understand. Joseph Friday, huh? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Who's he? Oh, I'm sorry. This is my partner, Frank Smith. How you doing? How do I know? Hmm. Look a little older. Yes, ma'am. Type O blood, huh? Well, guess you're all right. Come on in. Thank you. <sighs> Sit down. Get you anything? A cup of coffee, some hot chocolate, maybe? No, nothing for me, thank you. You? No, ma'am, thanks. Well, suit yourself. Now, what can I do for you? We understand you know Ms. Kieran. Next door neighbors. Maybe you can tell us what happened over there tonight. Seems like you'd know, being policemen and all. Well, yes, ma'am. We'd just like to get the story from you. All right. I was sitting here watching the TV, just going out to the kitchen to get a plate of snacks for the late show. You know, I like to kind of munch. Yes, ma'am. Ate a whole pot of cheddar cheese one night watching Baron Leone. Yes, ma'am. Now about tonight? Well, all of a sudden I heard this scream, real loud. I wasn't watching the television right then, so at first I thought it was from the set. You know, like a drama? Yes, ma'am. Got myself all settled for the movie. Then I heard another scream. That's when I knew something was wrong. Well, how's that? Well, there was a quiz on the television. No reason for any screams. Right then there was another one. That's when I knew it was from next door. What'd you do? Run over to the window. Looked out to see if I could see anything. Did you? The house was dark. So I went to the telephone and called Mrs. Kieran. Mm-hmm. Didn't answer. I figured to forget the whole thing. Yeah. Went back to the television. Then I heard another scream. Right smack in the middle of who invented the steamboat. Yes, ma'am. That did it. Knew there must be something wrong. Got my coat and went over there. I see. Knocked on the door but didn't get no answer. Must have knocked half a dozen times. Well, now, was there any movement from inside the house? None that I could see. I called to her a couple of times, yelled her name. Uh-huh. Didn't do no good. She didn't come to the door. Didn't even scream anymore. What'd you do then? Well, I tried the door, found it was open, so I went in. Mm-hmm. The door was unlocked, was it? Just said I found it open. Yes, ma'am. Go on. If you're going to doubt the things I tell you, young man, there isn't much reason for me to go on. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Griffin. Go ahead, please. Well, I went into the house. All dark, not a light on. Went right in and called to Mrs. Kieran. Yes, ma'am. Didn't answer. But I could kind of hear something off to the back of the place. Uh-huh. Sounded like somebody crying, kind of like a whimper, soft. Yeah. Came from the back of the house in the bedroom. Well, now, you didn't see anybody else in the house when you went in. If I had, I'd have told you before this. Go ahead. Got to the bedroom and opened the door. Couldn't see anything at first. Yeah. Then I was about to go on in, and this man jumped out at me. He was in the bedroom, was he? Yeah, he must have been hiding in the dark. Heard me coming, got back so I wouldn't see him. Mm-hmm. When I opened the door, he jumped right out. Almost scared me to death. Then what'd he do? Just jumped at me and ran out of the house, right through the front door. Opened it first, of course. And then I heard it slam. Was he armed? I couldn't tell. And then I heard the crying again. It was sort of off to one side of the room. I couldn't see right away where it was coming from. Yeah. I turned on the light, and right away I saw her. She was laying on the floor. Mm-hmm. Just terrible. The room was all tore up, things all thrown around, a real mess. And her laying right in the middle of it, all beat up. 
Looked like whoever done it tried to kill her. What'd you do then? Called the police. Dialed O and told the operator to send a policeman. Wasn't long before they was here. Seemed like a hundred of them all over the place. All right, Miss Griffin. Now, I wonder if you can give us a description of the man you saw. Other officers asked me the same thing. Isn't much I can tell you. Just all of a sudden he was there, and then he was gone. You're pretty sure it was a man, though? Certainly. Guess I know a man when I see one. Been married to one for 12 years. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us anything about him? Just got a glimpse of him. Not good. Can't tell you anything about how he looked. He was standing in the dark when I came in. Next thing I knew, he jumped right past me and went out the front door. Uh-huh. Would you know him if you saw him again? Oh, I don't think so. Just a glimpse, that's all. All right. I'd sure like to help, but there isn't much more I can tell you. That's okay. How is Mrs. Kieran? Is she going to be all right? Yes, ma'am. She'll be in the hospital for a few days, but she's going to be all right. Isn't she able to tell you something about the man who did this? No, ma'am. Seems like she'd be able to describe him. He must have been there for a good 15 minutes. How do you figure that? Well, must have been at least that long from the time I heard the first scream until I got over there. First off, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was on television. Yes, ma'am. You told us that. Must have been 15 minutes. Uh-huh. Did Mrs. Kieran have any enemies you know of? There were some people who didn't like her. A couple right here in the neighborhood. But none of them that would do a thing like this. How'd she and her husband get along, would you know? You mean, did they have any fights? Yes, ma'am. All the time. Seems like they was always battling about something. You know what caused the arguments? Mostly about her and other men. He thought she was running around on him. They used to fight about it. A couple of times he said if she didn't stop, he was going to kill her. Was it true? You mean about her and the men? Yeah. Might have been, for all I know. I didn't pay much mind to their troubles. Seems like I had too many things to keep me busy without getting mixed up in their problems. All right, Miss Griffin, I'm going to leave you one of our cards. If you think of anything else, appreciate a call. If I think of anything, I'll call you. Thank you. Does it strike you kind of funny? What's that? About Mrs. Kieran. Doesn't it strike you kind of odd how she can't think of anything about that fella? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, if somebody was in my house for that long time, I could tell you something. Something for sure. Yes, ma'am. Of course, I guess with the lights out, maybe she didn't see. Yes, ma'am. Then again, maybe she don't want to tell you. Frank and I drove to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. We talked to Dr. Sebastian and found that the victim had recovered to the point where she could be moved to her own hospital. We also talked with the officer who was with her. He told us that the woman hadn't been able to give any new information and her husband still had not been contacted. While I checked the crime lab, Frank ran the names Irene and Tom Kieran through R&I. 214 AM, we met back in the squad room. Hi, how'd it go at the crime lab? It's all here. Here's a picture of the room. The woman was found about here. You can see the way the stuff is scattered all around the place. Yeah, it looks like a robbery. Well, that's what he wanted it to look like. What do you mean? Well, in the dresser drawer here, the boys from the crime lab found $120 in cash. All the thief had to do was open the drawer and he'd have seen it too. How about the entrance? It's something else that doesn't seem to gel. Yeah. They checked all the windows and doors. No sign of any breaking. She must have opened the door for the thief. That means it was probably someone Mrs. Kieran knew, huh? Looks that way, doesn't it? Here's a picture of a footprint that Lee Jones found in the earth beside the path. The way it looks, the thief left the path when he ran from the house. Stepped in the soft dirt here. Do us any good? No, not much. The ground was wet. Won't do us any good now. Well, that's it, huh? Yeah. Leighton Prince didn't come up with anything. How'd you do? Nothing on the woman. Husband's got a record. Yeah. Mrs. Kieran had him pinched about 18 months ago on a beating charge. Refused to prosecute. Same thing a year ago. Beside her complaint, he's been booked for ADW and suspicion 211. Well, looks like we might have a case against the husband. Have you done any big time? No, never drew a conviction. Yeah. thing I don't understand, Joe, if it was her husband, why doesn't she beef him? She wasn't worried about having him arrested before. I don't know. There's something wrong about it. You got a list there of the husband's friends? Yeah. Well, let's talk to him. Maybe they can tell us where he is. All right. Hot shot. 1824, Studio Court. 211 and Sluggy. 1824. Two blocks from McCarran's. We left the office and drove to the address, Code 3. The victim was identified as a Mrs. Milo Hudson, age 28. An ambulance was dispatched from Hollywood Receiving Hospital and she was given first aid. She'd been beaten about the head and shoulders. As soon as the attendants had finished, Frank and I talked to her. Would you like to tell us what happened here? Awful thing. Most awful thing ever happened to me. Yes, ma'am. Did you get a look at the man? Pretty good. Not real good. But I did see him. He took all the money I had in the house. Twenty-seven dollars. Could you describe him for us? How do you mean? Well, how tall was he? I guess 
About as tall as you. I'll be about 5'11". If that's how tall you are. Yes, ma'am. How much would you say he weighed? Was he heavy or light? Round his size. That'd be about 175. I guess so. Anyway, his size. What about his face? Did you see it? Yes, sir. Got a good look. Would you know him if you saw him again? I certainly would. Never forget that face. Not if I live to be 100, I'll never forget it. What if you could describe him for us? Dark hair. Almost black. Kind of curly. A little wave right here in front. I see. Blue eyes. Dark blue. Might have been kind of hazel color. Dark. Uh-huh. Now, was there anything about him that might make it easy for us to identify him? Let me think. It seems there was something, but I can't remember what. Did he say anything to you? Not at first. When he came in, he didn't say a word. Just pointed the gun at me, motioned me back into the house. What kind of a gun would you remember? Just a gun. He did say something later. Yes, when we got to the bedroom. He started to go through the place. I told him that he'd better get out because my husband would be coming in any minute. I see. He smiled. Said he knew George didn't get home until 4.30. He called your husband by name, did he? Yes. Come to think of it, he did. I didn't pay much attention to it before, but he did. You think you ever saw the man before? Not that I remember. But you're sure you'd know him if you ever saw him again? I sure would. I remember what it was about him. Ma'am? You know, you wanted something about him that would make it easier to tell if it was the right man? Yeah. We well, had a scar, a small one, right here, by his eye. It made it look like his left eye was real big. It gave him a funny look. I see. Is that what you meant? Yes, ma'am, that's right. I wonder if you'd come down to the city hall and go through some pictures for us. I want to do everything I can to help. I'm supposed to check with my doctor. If he says it's all right, I'll be there. When would you want me? Well, in the morning, if you could make it. My doctor says it's all right. I'll be there. Okay, Miss Hudson. We can send a car for you, if you like. Might be better if you did. George likes to sleep late, and I don't drive. All right, ma'am, fine. We'll call you in the morning. I sure hope you catch the person who's done this. Lord knows how many more people he's going to hurt. Yes, ma'am. He seems to know all about people. When they're going to be alone and all. Seems to know all about them. Yeah. Knew right where everything in this house was. All the way. Knew right down to a T. You're sure you never saw him before? Positive. You don't forget that kind of face. See it once and you remember it all your life. Has there been anybody new in the neighborhood? I don't understand what you mean. Well, any salesmen, door-to-door -door canvassers, anybody like that? A residential neighborhood like this, there's always somebody around trying to sell something. Must be a couple people a day come to the door. But I'm sure the man who hit me wasn't one of them. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Not at all, Sergeant. I want to do what I can to help you get him. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea who he is? Where to find him? No, we don't, Miss Hudson. Terrible to think about it. A man like that, roaming the streets. A woman isn't safe in her own home anymore. We'll get to him, ma'am. Oh, I should hope so. But what do we do in the meantime? Just sit here and wait for this lunatic to kick the doors down? We'll do everything we can. Awful. I'll never forget how he came in here. Shoved me around. Never forget it. That makes you even. What? He won't either. Frank called communications and got out a supplemental broadcast carrying the description of the suspect. I continued to talk to Mrs. Hudson. She was unable to come up with any additional information. We left the description of the suspect at the stats office and asked R and I to check the oddity file for a possible identification on the scar the suspect had. The next afternoon, Mrs. Milo Hudson came down to the office and went through the mug books, but she was unable to make an identification. She was shown pictures of Tom Kieran, the husband of the first victim, but stated positively that he was not the man who'd beaten her. The list of possibles came back from the stats office and it was checked without result. A week went by. The suspect hit three more times. In each case, the M.O. was the same. In each case, he escaped. However, we were able to get a little more information on him. We had the artist and crime analysis section draw up a composite picture of the suspect. It was run off and distributed to all officers in the city. The daily papers ran it on their front pages. Thursday, January 27th, 5.20 p.m. Frank and I got back to the office from dinner. I'm gonna call Faye and tell her it looks like a late night. I checked the book. Pinky called in. Yeah? He and Leitner checked on that magazine salesman that was out in the neighborhood. Go any place? No. Description's way off. The guy's only been in town the last three days. 1635 Studio Court, 211. Suspect there now. Frank and I left the 
office and drove over to the address we'd been given on the phone. We got out of the car and went up the walk to the house. The woman who'd called us was at the front door. She said that the man on the porch had rung the doorbell and tried to force his way into her house. She went on to say that her husband wasn't home and that she'd managed to stall the man until we got there. We took him back to the city hall and talked to him in the interrogation room. He identified himself as Victor Nadell. Frank went down the hall to run him through records and identification. A lot of trouble you guys are causing me. There's no reason for all this. What were you doing at that house? Trying to earn a living. You have to force your way in to do that? Oh, that old broad's off her rocker. I didn't try to get in that place. She says you did. Well, she's flipped. What do you do for a living? I work. You know another way? What kind of work do you do? I'm a salesman. What do you sell? Right now I'm selling lots. You mean real estate? Yeah. Where? Tracked out in the desert. Who do you work for? I don't think I'm going to tell you that. You're not going to get them in no trouble. We're going to find out anyway. You might as well save yourself a lot of trouble and tell us. You're going to have to find out. You ever been arrested? A couple of times. Where? Oklahoma. What was the charge? They call it hijack. You mean robbery? Same thing. You ever do any time? No, they couldn't nail it down. Where do you live? Got a room down East 5th. Room privileges. Who do you work for? I'm not going to tell you their name. How long have you been in town? A couple of months. You've been working for that real estate company ever since you got here? Yeah, I got the job a couple of days after I got off the train. How'd you get the job? Answered an ad. You ever see that woman out in studio court before? No. Never saw her before? I told you. She'd have no reason to tie a bad beef on you, would she? She's doing it, ain't she? Yeah, but it's kind of silly without a reason. She's a woman, that's all they need. All right, take everything out of your pockets, put it on the table. Why? Look, I'm not playing a game with you. What's this all about? What are you guys trying to prove with all this strong arm stuff? We're trying to find out why you wanted to break into that house tonight. I told you I didn't break into the house. That old harpy's out of her mind telling you a thing like that. I don't know why, but she's got something against me. She'd like to see me get into trouble. You said you didn't know her. That's right. Never saw her before. That's what I said. Then why would she try to build a thing like this? I told you, I don't know, but it's a lie. All I did was walk up to the door, ask if I could talk to her. <laughs> Just try to talk to her. Right away, she starts yelling at me to get away, get off the property. Why didn't you leave then? Well, I needed to make a sale. Well, you must have figured she wasn't interested. I had to make a sale. I haven't been doing so good. I had to make a sale or I'd have lost my job. Is that any reason to act like a tough guy? All I tried to do was talk her into buying a lot. Yeah, well, you've got a funny way of doing it. I thought maybe she's going to call the office, make a complaint. She'd have done that, I'd have lost my job, sure. That's all there is to it, huh? I'm telling you the truth. You've got to believe me. You ever worked that neighborhood before? No, it's the first time for me. I've been feeling kind of sick the last week. It's the first time for me. First time around there. Where'd you work before? Westlake area. Have any trouble out there? No, none. Why'd you make the switch then? I just thought I'd try a new territory, make up for the week I lost. You got anybody who'll back up this story? People at my room and house. They'll tell you. I was there all week. I had some kind of flu. They'll tell you. See you a minute? Yeah. You can put that stuff away. You want me to wait here? Well, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? It's possible he's not the one we want. Why? What do you mean? A call just came in. Radio car just picked up a fellow out on Rosewood Avenue. Yeah. Caught him in a woman's house trying to beat her to death. How about the description? Matches our suspect right down the line. <laughs> Victor Nadell was booked in at the main jail pending further investigation. We were unable to connect him with any robbery, but the city attorney's office issued a complaint charging violation of section 415 of the penal code. At 7.46 p.m., the suspect we'd gotten the call about arrived at the city hall. He was fingerprinted and checked. We found that he'd served a year and a day in an eastern state for breaking and entering. Physically, he matched the description we'd gotten from the victims. The women were contacted and asked to come down to the office. Frank and I questioned the suspect. Like I told you before, my true name is Rudolph Mason. Where do you live? My home's out in Hollywood. It's a big place. Narrow it down. 2917 Sarah. You ever been arrested? Yes, you know that. It was a mistake, though. Both times. Well, the second time was because of the first. Yeah. Now, once you've done time, it seems anything goes wrong, the cops are on your back. Like this. You want to tell us what happened out there tonight? You mean on Rosewood? That's right. Well, it was all a big misunderstanding. Tell us about it. Well, I wanted to use her phone. I don't know, I guess you got scared about something. All I wanted to do was make a call. How'd you ask her? A regular way. I told her I was in trouble. I asked her if I could phone. Next thing I know, she's screaming up a storm. And there are cops all around me. According to the report, you didn't stop when you were told to. Is that right? I guess so. Well, is it or isn't it? Yeah. Why'd you run? I didn't know what was going on. I got a record. I've had enough to do with cops to last me the rest of my life. As soon as I heard the sirens, I took off. I guess I didn't hear the cop tell me to stop. You know, it's kind of hard to believe. You believe the woman who said I tried to slug her. You believe her, but you don't believe me. You see, that's what I meant. What's that? Well, as soon as you fall once, there's a dozen cops behind you, all the time waiting to stomp on you. 
You ever figure that you helped to build it that way? It reads good, but you ain't got nobody in your tail. All right, now tell us again about tonight. I told the cops who picked me up. I told the cop who fingerprinted me. Already told you once. How many times you want to hear it? Until we get it the right way. How are you going to know? We'll know. I can't think and hear all this noise. All right, let's go across the hall where it's quiet. Sit down there. All right, Mason. Now let's clean it up. What do you mean? You know we're going to have no trouble making you on these things. We've got the victims on their way down here now. As soon as they identify you, you've had it. Save yourself a lot of time and trouble if you cop out. Well, I'd like to give you a hand, Sergeant. I really would. But there's nothing I can do. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. What were you doing on January 13th? The 13th? That's right. Well, what day was that? Thursday. I don't know. That was a long time ago. Hard to remember. How about the 14th? Same. I don't remember. What about the 17th? Well, yeah, I can tell you about that. Go ahead. I got through work and went home, met the wife and had dinner. Took in a show. You can prove that? Yeah, ask the wife, she'll tell you. All right. How about Wednesday, the 19th? Blank. You don't remember what you were doing on the 19th of January, huh? No, is it important? Might be for you. How about the 20th? Uh, that'll be Thursday. That's right. I stayed home and watched wrestling on television. You can prove that, can you? Sure, we had some people in to watch the matches. Give us their names? Yeah. Who was wrestling that night? You want them all or just the me? Well, how about the semi-wind-up? Well, let me think, uh... It was a tag team match between the McLean brothers and the South Twins. You're sure, huh? Positive. How about the 22nd? What'd you do then? 22nd? Uh, that'd be a... Saturday. I'm off Saturday. I don't remember too good. Probably came home and sat around the house. Drank beer and loafed. Mm-hmm. That was Saturday the 22nd? Yeah, the 22nd. How about Monday the 24th? I bowled that night. Where? The lanes on Sunset. You bowl there all the time? Yeah. You bowl every Monday night? No, not every week. Usually it's on Tuesday. Why'd you change this week? Uh, some of the guys couldn't make it Tuesday, so we changed the day. Mm-hmm. Anything special to you about January 17th, 20th, 24th? What do you mean, special? Birthday, anniversary, something like that? No. Just regular days? Yeah. Nothing to make them stand out? No. Well, then how come you can remember what you were doing on those days and you can't give us a story to fit January 13th, 14th, 19th, or the 22nd? Well, I don't know. What are you guys trying to get me to say? What are you trying to get at? The truth. Well, I'm giving it to you. We can't see it. How come you remember those days? Well, I don't know. Just do. Kind of funny. I couldn't remember what I was doing last week. I'd have to sit down and think about it. You didn't even have to try to remember. You knew right away. Like it was important for you to remember. You trying to build an alibi? Well, you asked me where I was, I told you. Let's have the names of the people you say were with you. You gonna talk to them? That's right. Well, maybe they won't remember. We'll find out if they do. Well, what happens if they don't? You're in big trouble. You're holding a lot of it right now. Let's have the names. Huh. Sure, I haven't got anything to worry about. I'll give them to you. All right. Write them down. Gosh. I don't know all the addresses. We'll look them up for you. You have to talk to them, huh? What's the matter? You afraid they won't stand behind you? Well, it's not that. Well, what is it? It's just that they don't know that I've done time. Maybe when they find out, they'll try to get me. You know, say that they weren't with me. They might do that. Like the woman tonight. Yeah, like that. People don't like you very much, do they, Mason? Huh? Just seems like everybody's trying to get you into trouble. I want a lawyer. I'll check. See if the victims are here yet. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen now? Got some people we want you to see. Who are they? The women you beat up. You can't make me on those jobs. We think we can. Yeah, well, you just try. You take this thing to court and I'll throw it right out. That's the way you got it figured, huh? Yeah, that's right. I want a lawyer. You'll get one. And a jury. I want a jury trial. You got a choice. You bet I have. Bring all those women down here to point me out. Well, it ain't going to work. Is that so? A bunch of people who don't like me. Well, I want a jury. A judge and a jury. All right, you'll get them. But I'll make you a bet. Huh? They won't like you either. On May 16th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of four counts of robbery in the first degree, four counts of assault with intent to do great bodily injury, and received sentence as prescribed by law.